Hi, hello, welcome, welcome back. My name is Carson and this is my podcast where I talk about knitting. And yeah, thanks for joining me today. I got, um, I have a few objects, a few whips. Well, two whips and one finished object. So yeah, thanks for joining and let's just get into it. So I was feeling very cozy today. It was raining outside and it was very dark and moody. So I moved to this new room. This is a new location for those of you who are returning viewers. New location. This is the nursery room that'll eventually be the nursery. It is yellow right now, but it's kind of fun. No. <laughs> so I came here because it was really dark and moody and it gets the most light, but uh, the sun just came out. It is blaring and it is hot now, but you know what? I'm keeping my sweatshirt on. I'm channeling autumn vibes. I'm so ready for fall. I'm not sure if y'all are too, but I've just been feeling the fall vibes. So I'm just going to pretend like it's really cold inside and outside. I'll probably be sweating bullets in a minute, so we'll see how this goes. So yeah, I'm cozied up on our guest bed, and I'm just, I'm feeling it today, I'm feeling it. Just got off work, <laughs> so my brain is crazy, but we're gonna calm down with a nice, nice podcast. Okay, so first thing is first, I have one finished object, and it's kind of a big deal, <laughs> to me at least. I finished the hell of it sweater. Woo. It's done. This has been such a long work in progress. I honestly can't believe I finished it. Wow. Who knew working on something, you know, multiple days in a row, you'll be able to finish it. <laughs> I worked on this for months. Um, I did take a break. If, if you've been here before, you know this. You know the story. This is my husband's. I committed to making this uh, for Christmas last year. He did not get it for Christmas last year. So then I was like, okay, it'll just be like Valentine's present. Did not, mm -mm, didn't happen. Um, got pregnant and uh, was very, very sick <laughs> for months and just stopped, stopped knitting. The color work on this thing took forever, for me too at least. And that was before I was feeling sick. So anyways, I picked it back up. Maybe a month ago. Yeah, I think I finished it. Or I started it back around a month ago. And I finished this baby. I knit on this one solely for like this past week. So I finished both the sleeves. I think last time I finished the body and I was on one sleeve. But it didn't take that long. I think one sleeve took me like a week maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I got this sleeve done this past week. Um, so yeah, I am happy with it. It does have some fit issues. Uh, I've never made my husband any big garment. I made him like gloves and I made him a hat, which he never wears. Um, <laughs> I've made him a few small things, but this is the one big garment I made him. And it definitely, it needs some adjustments. Um, but I think I can fix them with blocking. I did block this guy, but it was kind of short on him. So I focused really hard on making it longer and it did, it, it did good. But like when he lifts up his um, arms, I think because just it's such like a deep yolk that like uh, the bottom comes up, but I don't think that's gonna be fixed. Like I would have to make it dress length for it not to do that. So I think he's just gonna have to deal with that. It did get a little bit longer, but what really um, caught me off guard whenever <laughs> I finished it, were the sleeves. I don't know if you can tell, but they're like super skinny. <laughs> they get skinny pretty fast. And that maybe that's just like the style of it. I should have looked at the schematics before because usually I just look at the bust and go from there. And that's what I did for this one. You know, I think I even swatched this one because I was like, this is such a big project. I'm going to swatch it. And I just, I didn't really look at the arm dimensions. So I feel like Maybe I should have just not done the decreases the way it said to because you just like continuously decrease As you can see, it's like very skinny, especially on the forearm Even on me, I tried it on because you know, I want to steal it too And it's skinny on my forearm too So, and this is the size too And it fits him, it's honestly a little bit big In the yolk on my husband Um so like, I don't think we should have gone up a different size. I think I maybe should have just gone off the pattern 
and waited to decrease until later. Make the sleeve kind of like this. It's, you know, <laughs> this is the biggest sweatshirt. I thrifted this bad boy and I'm obsessed with it. It's like an extra large. It's the perfect prego sweatshirt. But you know, I should have made a sleeve that's loose. That's what I'm trying to say. I should have made a looser sleeve. Um, and I've never made a sleeve before that decreased like this. You like start decreasing immediately and just keep on going till the end, roughly. So yeah, um, I'm gonna try to just block the arms again though and like really stretch it out because I blocked it but I didn't pin the arms in place. I just, I don't know. I was just hoping they would stretch out and I think they can. I don't know how much, but I think I can like aggressively block it. We'll see. And you know, if, uh, if it doesn't work, I can always rip back the arms, but we don't wanna do that. Maybe I'll force him to try it on and I'll insert like a video or a picture of what it looks like on him. So yeah, that's what we're working through right now. But other than that, going good. Uh, it's finished. And he's not gonna wear it anytime soon. He's not gonna wear it in August. He's not gonna wear it in September even, or probably not even October or November, or probably be December, or even, I feel like it gets cold here. I live in Texas, so the weather's so off. I feel like it gets cold here around March. So <laughs> if I need to make any adjustments, you know, I don't have to do it right now. We can wait on that. So yeah, this is technically now, it's for his birthday, uh, cause his birthday's at the end of this month. So yeah, this is it. Oh, did I say this? It's the Halibut Sweater by Kaylin Hunter. I probably didn't even say that at the beginning. But, so yeah, the color work was fun-ish. <laughs> I have said this before, but at the beginning I'm like, oh, I love this. I love doing color work. And then toward the end I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm exhausted. This one took a long time. Um, the last colorwork sweater I did, it was worst of weight, and this is DK. So I think that just got me. So I think it's gonna be a while before I do another colorwork project, but this is it, baby. This is <laughs> the finished thing. Yeah, I'll definitely insert a picture so you can see it. Or a video. Got a little fish on it, but the colorwork does look stunning. Like after you're done, it's worth it because it looks amazing, and especially after you block it. So, yeah. That's the hell of a sweater. Officially donezo. It's been a long time coming. Okay, whips. I'll show you these in order, I guess. So, this is. Which one is the back? Which one is the front? One sec. I think it goes like this. This is the Friday Sweater Baby by Petite Knit. This is for our unborn child. Um, it's a whip. This is my officially my works in progress section. Um, so it, yeah, it's a little whip. I'm making it in the second size, which is the size one to two months. It's not the newborn size. I'm officially calling this his birthday sweater. So well, I don't know when he'll get to wear this. Hopefully, maybe we'll just crank up the air conditioner that you see <laughs> so we can wear this. He'll be here around December. So maybe it'll be cold enough, but I'm holding on hope because it's just so cute and I've had so much funding this up. So yeah, I did stop after the body. I did this all like in a few days and then I um, got to the sleeves and I just haven't done it yet. But I have an acquisition that I think will help me with the sleeves because I was kind of stuck. But yeah, it's so cute. I'm using Knit Picks mostly for the main color, Knit Picks Twill. And I'm using some other Knit Picks colors for the stripes. Um, then I'm using leftover scraps as well from the stripes. I don't know if you can see all the colors, but it's kind of like ochre. Uh, it's like a sagey, bluish, greenish color, uh, clay color. It honestly looks kind of pink though. I like it. And then an orange and it goes back to ochre. So you have four colors all together. And it's been so fun. And I talked about this a good bit last time, but I totally forgot about, um, I think I was just so excited about the way this was knitting up, I totally forgot about my qualms. <laughs> uh, not really qualms, but I did have some issues at the beginning. So I think there's like a tiny bit of a... There was just like one part in the pattern that really tripped me up. And I think it might have been like a translation issue where like one word was off. But that was enough to trip me up. <laughs> 
And so I had never done, this is, um, is it broken rib stitch? I think that's what it's called. Broken rib. Yeah, so it's like knit one row, knit and purl the next row. But, uh, so it like tells you that at the beginning of the pattern. It's like broken rib pattern, you know, knit one, purl one, knit one. It's, you know, that's broken rib. Uh, and so I got to the increases and I had never done broken rib before. So it didn't occur to me that like every time I increased, I would be one stitch off. I had to figure that out for myself after a few rows. And so I just kept doing like, I kept going knit one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one. And then on the knit ones you increased. And so <laughs> it just looked funky after a few times of increasing. I was like, I don't think this is lining up. So I zoomed in really far on the picture because I had never done broken rib stitch before. And so yeah, mine weren't lining up because I had, you know, extra stitches after increasing, but I did not account for that in the broken rib pattern. So I had to knit back a few rows. I didn't rip it up or throw a lifeline in because I didn't know. <laughs> I don't know. I can throw a lifeline in stockinette, but like broken rib, I don't know. I get confused with the pearls. So I just knit backwards for a few rounds. It was relaxing, you know. <laughs> I did it. Um, it wasn't, it didn't put too big, too much of a damper on my day, but I did it. And then uh, it ended up being like knit one, you know, increase round and then knit one, purl one, knit one, increase round, and then purl one, knit one, because you were off. So if you've never done broken rib before and you're doing this pattern, keep that in mind. I don't know if that's on the older sizes. I don't know. And I guess it did say keep going an established pattern. So maybe established pattern overruled the first rule that was, you know, knit, knit one per one. I don't know. Sometimes I take things too literally. It's okay. I fit, I fixed it. I fixed it. It's really cute. It's so small when I hold it off like this. Wow, that's tiny. See, I'm excited. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about that one. This might be a quick episode. Okay, but this one. This one I'm very excited about. So if you've been watching, I've had a major issue with casting on things for myself. If I do cast on something, it gets ripped up or I mess up and I rip it up or I don't, I haven't loved like the color and I rip it up, haven't loved the way it turns out and I rip it up. But, so I had, I got this, um, I think it's Barocco Barocco Remix Light. It's like a blend of a lot of different types of, I would say summer yarns. It does have acrylic and nylon, but I think it also has cotton and linen. There's like a ton of stuff in it. So it almost has like a tweedy look to it. And I really like this color. And so I got this to make the June top because I had ripped up a different version of the June top that was in pink. The June top, I don't know if the June top's happening anymore. We'll see. It's not a big deal if it doesn't. Could always do it next year. So I got this for that, and then I thought, oh, because I found these really cute baby overalls, and I think I do want to make those in this, because I think I'll have leftover. I have two skeins of this, and I'm already on, I haven't even told you what I'm doing yet, have I? <laughs> I'll just show you. So I decided to cast on something I have never made before, and if you can tell from way back here, it's a ranunculus. Wow. I'm excited about this guy, and I'm excited to be excited about it. Look at that pretty yolk. Wow. I'm sorry, I'm staring at it in the camera. I'm obsessed with this. I'm obsessed. So yeah, I cast it on Ranunculus. Um, I don't know, I just feel like it would be the perfect summerish piece, and I think what got me out of my funk. I felt like I waited too long to make summer stuff, and I didn't really know what would fit me. like. Some patterns I think are really cute, but I look at them and I'm like, I don't think that'll fit my pregnant body. Like, I don't, I don't see how that would work. So I think what really got me out of my funk is I decided to make more transitional pieces because I'm really stoked for fall, but it's still really hot here. So I think if I make light, airy garments that are in more fallish, neutral tones and colors, that excites me. And it has been exciting me because this, I can't stop knitting on this. 
this is definitely take o taken over um, after the halibut, but I will say I didn't wait to cast this on until after I finished the halibut sweater. And I casted this on Saturday night. Currently it's Tuesday and I'm already done with the yolk and usually the yolk takes me the longest. So wow, <laughs> I'm so impressed. Um, yeah, I, um, I've never knit a ranunculus and it's, I think, if not the most popular pattern on Ravelry, one of the most popular patterns. It is by um, Midori, let me see. It is by Midori Hiroshi, I think that's how you say it. So yeah, if you haven't heard of the Runculus, go look. I'm sure you have though. It's everywhere, it's on Instagram, it's on Ravelry. Everyone's knitting one, everyone's knitting multiples. And I'm not someone who likes to knit multiples of things really. I kind of get bored after knitting it once, but this I think I can knit again. I already have plans to knit a thicker, like straight up sweater. So for this one, I haven't said this, but I'm gonna keep it a t-shirt. I did make a few modifications though, and I think that's why people love this pattern is because like you can easily make modifications. So, um, there's two options for the neckline. There is like a tighter neckline option and then a boat ne neckline option that comes like off the shoulder almost, just really wide. And I wanted the tighter one, but I did not want to do tubular cast on. <laughs> oh yeah, and this pattern is free, I think. There might be a paid version now, but I got it free, so I think it updated. I don't know, you'll have to go check it out. I'm not sure if it's free or paid, or if there's different versions that are free and paid. Because this one actually had multiple, um, multiple sizes. I want to say the free one only has one size, and it's very customizable to your yarn, to your needles. So yeah, anyways, <laughs> go check it out. It might be free. Um, so what I was saying is I decided to do the, sh the tighter neckline, because that's the look I wanted, but I did not want to do tubular cast on. That's what I recommended. Never done that before. Didn't want to do it. So I ended up going with the ribbing needle size, which they actually didn't recommend for the neckline. They recommended using the main needle. So I went down to the ribbing needle, and I used the recommended needles, besides this part. <laughs> um, and I just cast it on pretty loosely, long tail cast on. And I knit up a few rows of ribbing for the neckline. And I did do, there's uh, options for sh German short rows on the back and the front. And I wasn't sure if I was going to do those. I looked at people's project page to see if they did them. And a lot of people said they didn't do them. Some people said they did do them. So I just did them. And it was honestly not that bad. Sometimes I feel like German short rows can take forever. But these did not. They're, it's like very few. And I think it made a really cool effect. So yeah, I think I did mess up on the texture part on the loop part so there's like there's all these pretty pretty textures and lace patterns but there's one part where i don't think it's a big mess up though i don't even know if i could tell from this far away um on one of the parts where you like draw a loop through your yarn i think i accidentally did one motif twice oh that was a lot of sun <laughs> I think I did one twice, so I think there's a part in the pattern where, oh, I got a dot on my nose. Wow, I'll stay back here. <laughs> I think there's a part in the pattern that you draw a loop through like the first and second stitch and pull it through, and the next, the next loop pull through, I don't really know what that's called, but the next one you do, you do it through the second and third stitch, and I just did it through the second and start, third stitch everything. And <laughs> I did it through the second, third stitch every time, um, which it's not a big deal. And I had, there, it was the same amount of stitches each time. So like it wasn't, I didn't, it wasn't like a huge deal. It just may not look like some people's, but honestly, I don't think I could tell. So yeah, that's like another thing I did. Um, I'm making this one short sleeve, but I did not follow the short sleeve option in the pattern. I'm went with the long sleeve because I'm pretty sure you just cast off the sleeves and it kind of makes a capped sleeve effect. I don't know if that's how you say it or if that's what you call it. But I decided that I wanted some more length on the sleeves, just, you know, like a little summer top and then I'll do ribbing after. So yeah, I think that's all my modifications so far. 
I'm not sure how long I want to make it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to make it like super cropped or not. I think it's going to be so light and airy. Even if I don't make it cropped, I think it'll still fit and I can like tuck it into like, you know, shorts or I can see it over. I have this um, orange dress. It's kind of like a baby doll dress. I can see it over that, you know? Yeah, I see this on a lot of different things. So I'm very excited and it's so airy. It's so light. I know it'll grow for sure because, um, like I said, I use the recommended needle size, which they're pretty big. I haven't knit with this big of needles in a long time. US 10, six millimeter. See, I've been knitting, I've been knitting with teeny tiny, like, I don't know. I don't even have my needles, but like super teeny tiny needles. And so this feels like a very big change, but it's going so fast. So yeah, I know it'll expand and I'm using DK yarn and I was kind of worried about how much space would be in between the stitches, if that makes any sense. Cause I thought about using my knitting for all of Merino, cotton Merino, and that's fingering weight. And the pattern says you can use lace weight to worsted weight. But I figured that would maybe be too see-through. I have seen people do a lot of really pretty versions just in one strand of mohair. And I think that would look so pretty. But anyways, so I was kind of worried, but I think it looks totally fine. And I'm using, this is DK weight. I do though want to make a version in maybe worsted weight. Or even I have some Aran weight yarn, like feeling, what is it called? Wool in the Gang Feeling Good yarn and Knit Picks, they're like similar version to that. So I don't know, I feel like that fluffiness would look so nice and it would like fill the garment more. So I think I would want to make like a full, <clears throat> excuse me, I need some water, it's getting hot in here. Okay. <laughs> I think doing that type of yarn with this pattern would make a really fluffy effect and I want to do that in the long sleeve version so I think later I actually have a few a couple sweaters that I want to rip up so we'll see but yeah that's my ridiculous I'm super excited about this guy is this the back oh yeah it's the back I think I could finish it really soon like I think I could finish it this weekend for sure I haven't been knitting a ton this week I've been super busy with work, but it can be easy peasy. And we're going on vacation, kind of. Well, yeah, it's vacation. It's just a few days. We're gonna travel to the mountains of Arkansas. <laughs> so we recently moved back to Texas, but we've been living in Washington for three years. So we got super spoiled with all the mountains around and all of the, like, you know, the oceans right there. It's just, it was so pretty. And we were so close to everything. like. We would take so many weekend trips and now it's harder because we have we're homeowners now <laughs> there's a lot of things that can you know happen with your home and i just kind of like staying home too to be honest and then we also have a little puppy who's not really a puppy anymore okay sorry i had to delete some stuff off my card um but what i was saying is that we used to go on all these little weekend trips to the mountains we were so close to so many pretty things and but now you know we have we have dogs, we live like three-ish hours away from our hometown, so it's kind of hard to get people to watch the dogs. I don't know. And our dog, our big dog, used to come with us a lot. Uh, he's very chill. He's like a senior dog. He's very... <laughs> not responsible. I mean, he is responsible, but he's just very independent. And I don't know. Our, we have a puppy who's like... 20? I don't know. He's like four or five months old. I don't know if you heard. That's him. He's a hound dog and he barks a lot. So I don't trust him in like an Airbnb alone if we go out and do stuff. So anyways, we're taking a little weekend trip. I take, we're going to take a few days off work. I'm going to go to the mountains of Arkansas because we've been craving mountains and I really hope because it'll be September and I know it probably won't be that cold at all. It'll probably still be hot, but I just want to wear this then. I want to wear it in the mountains, you know, and we're going to be in a really cute little town. We have an Airbnb in a neighborhood, so I think it'll be a mix of like city 
and mountains. Even though, does Arkansas have real mountains? I guess they do, the Ozarks. That's in Arkansas, right? I don't know. I feel like the mountains around here remind me more of hills than mountains, because we've been to like Washington and stuff. I don't know, we're gonna go. <laughs> we're going to the mountains of Arkansas. It'll be a fun time. So yeah, I'm hoping I can get this done in time, which I should. I think we go in two weeks. And I can definitely do this this weekend, I think. So yeah. That's it. Um, I'm not going to show you my socks because they're still just hanging on. I have one done, one... I'm still on the hill. I haven't done anything to it. But I think I might take that one on our road trip. End it on it. Then. So maybe I'll finish it on my road trip. It's a good portable project. So yeah, that's all my whips and uh, finished objects. I do have kind of some, I mean, they are acquisitions. It's not yarn though. I've been pretty good about not buying yarn recently, given I went on a huge yarn haul in Houston a few weekends ago and I got more yarn than I need, especially for baby stuff, so. But I'll show you. So uh, this weekend, we took my brother and his fiance to estate sales because they came up and they visited and they stayed with us and they'd never been to any sort of estate sale. So we took them and um, <clears throat> there was one that was, our dog is barking again. There, there was one that had a lot of really cool stuff. I know estate sales are kind of weird because sometimes I mean, they're different. Sometimes it's because someone died and sometimes it's just because they're moving. So I don't really know the situation of this one. But the person who had this estate sale had a huge attic and it was like their craft room. And they were s as... <laughs> My little puppy is howling like crazy. Um, so there was this huge attic and it was a craft room, but she sewed a lot, apparently. She had a ton of fabric tons of fabric and tons of buttons and I've been making like little rompers and I want to make some cardigans for our little tiny child it's not here yet um so yeah I found these vintage buttons I don't know if you can see them yeah they're like this sage green I'm really into sage green that there's literally this I don't know why I'm showing you this one it's the exact same so yeah I don't know if you can see that very well but Sage green vintage buttons, supreme quality, high style buttons, 29 cents, latest fashions for men. <laughs> it's so funny how they gendered things back then, because I would buy these for me. <laughs> so yeah, I got these and they were, I don't even know how much they were. I don't even know if they charged them for us, if they charge us for them, because they're just, you know, buttons. I don't know. So yeah, I'm thinking we have, or I have that crazy yarn that's all different colors of um, like blues and greens and oranges. It's the Queensland yarn, I think. And I kind of want to make a cardigan out of that. I think this would be a really cool pairing for buttons. So yeah, we'll see about that. And then I'm very excited about this one. Um, so I've been knitting lots of tiny things, as you know. Wow. Wow, that's fun. Okay, so as you know, I've been knitting lots of tiny things, and whenever I was knitting this specifically, I ran into an issue. I just didn't have any needles this size. I think it was 2.75 millimeters, like a US 2 or 2.5, two I don't know. I just, there were a lot of teeny tiny sizes I didn't have, so I had to go to my local yarn store, which I love, and I got some Chiago needles, and I fell in love with them. Never really knit with metal needles before. For, well, I had, but like the cheap, cheap kind. And I really liked them and I was very surprised. So I was talking about how I wanted to find a needle set, but specifically just like teeny tiny needle sizes, because that's what I need with all these teeny tiny baby knits. So someone actually reached out to me and they said they had one of these Chiagu sets, uh, teeny tiny needles, um, and they don't they didn't, weren't using them, so they asked if I would be interested in buying them secondhand, and I was like, yes, <laughs> thank you for saving me, especially because I, I stopped after the body because um, I didn't want to use magic loop on the sleeves. 
I just don't love that. And sometimes I feel like if I do magic loop, it gets slanted almost. Like I'm pulling stitches or something. Maybe I need a longer cable. Anyways, so I just kind of stayed here because I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't really want to, I don't want to knit this on, you know, magic loop. And then um, they reached out to me and I was like, um, yeah, like I'll take these. So now I have needles to finish the sleeves on this Friday sweater. And uh, so I got them from Rose Opal Knits. Daphne and Erica, they have a YouTube. I did not know this. She reached out to me on her personal account. But I got this in the mail and I got this cute little like card. So I looked it up and yeah, she and her mother-in-law actually have a YouTube channel. So you should definitely check them out. I'll link them below. But yeah, I was so excited to take these off of her hands. So excited she reached out to me. That was just so cool. And let me tell you, look how teeny tiny this set is. It is literally teeny tiny. And I just really like buying things secondhand, you know, especially if someone's not using it. Like, I'll use it. Gosh, this lie is crazy. So yeah, they're teeny, teeny tiny. Let me show you. If you can see this teeny package. Look how teeny tiny. Oh my gosh, so cute. <laughs> I love them so much. I just, even I just love looking at them because they're so little. And so they range, yeah, they range from sizes US 0 to US 3. And they come in like a longer needle set or a super short needle set. So I think these will be really good for socks too. And they have these little bitty cables. They are thinner than the regular or just the cables that I've been using. But I still really like them. I don't even know if you can see this. They're so little. So yeah, I'm very excited about this. It's just so little, so tiny. And it also came with um, a few other like accessories. Came with a little set of this and this guy. Whoops, like a needle. I don't know what you call these things. It tells you what size needle it is, I guess, in case like the size rubs off. So, yeah, thank you so much, Daphne, for reaching out, letting me know that you had these. Because um, I was happy to buy them and take them off your hands. And then she also sent me this cute little stitch marker, which she did not have to do, but she did, and that was so nice. So yeah, I'm very excited about this acquisition. Very excited. So maybe I'll finish the Friday baby sweater soon. We shall see. Alrighty, so that's it for acquisitions. Um, so yeah, I am burning up. So I, well actually, I want to talk about, it's progressively getting darker outside, so I'm going to change my lighting. But I was feeling so cozy earlier. Literally had to convince myself not to make hot chocolate because it was so hot outside, but it looked cozy, like it was so moody. So I brought some books because I, oops, <laughs> I feel like Rudolph when that happens. I brought some books um, because I thought maybe I'll like to read too and I could like chat about books for a hot minute. So yeah, if you like reading too, stick around. If not, maybe I'll catch you next time. <laughs> Thanks for hanging. Um, so yeah, I just want to talk about some books. I recently got a library card, which has been really fun. Just getting out and going to the library. It's free, you know, unless you have late fees. I hope I don't get any late fees. Because um, I do forget things quite a lot. So that's been really fun. If you have a local library, I highly recommend going and check it out. Because it's just so much fun to wander around. It's like a bookstore, but these books are free. And you just check them out and bring them back, you know? So um, I'll talk about what I read last. Just got finished with this. I don't know, you can't even see this. And I don't even have the cover, the book cover on it because I'm terrible. So this is Crescent City, House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Either Mass or Moss. I don't know. <laughs> I'm obsessed with Sarah J. Mass. I'm going to call it Mass. That sounds right. I'm obsessed with Sarah J. Mass and um, I binged, binged, uh, what is it? I call it Akatar, but I know. What is the name? I'm terrible with book names. Somebody can ask me what I'm reading, and I'm so into the book, but I literally can't say the name because I, I can describe to you what's happening, but like I, I don't remember the name. A Court of Thorns and Roses. So I binged that series last year. Maybe this time last year. It was around fall because it was really moody. I always get into reading more in the fall. And oh my gosh, I have not had a series excite me as much as that one did. I mean, I'm talking like since Harry Potter, you know, and I was young 
and I was such a big bookworm back then I loved reading series like that that really just took me into it and so I remember Harry Potter being a huge one and then Twilight as well <laughs> You know, you just get sucked in. You just want to keep reading and reading and it's amazing. And I hadn't felt that feeling in such a long time. I honestly wondered if that was just gone. Like, if, if I had lost that. And I was, like, teetering on young adult books and adult books. Because, like, technically I'm an adult. I mean, I guess I'm still a youngish adult. But, you know, I'm not in high school. <laughs> so... Because uh, I've always loved like fantasy young adult books and so I was really at a crossroads because I was trying to read more just straight, straight up fiction, just like adult books, you know, things that aren't in the YA section. And I was really struggling because I didn't love anything I read. Now I do love Time Traveler's Wife. That's a good one. Um, but other than that, like that was, that was it. And so I picked up a a Court of Thorns and Roses because honestly I saw the cover and I thought it looked so pretty. <laughs> I definitely judge books by their covers. I will gravitate towards something pretty. I don't know what that says about me, but I loved the cover and I was like, wow, so pretty. And I didn't, I'm not, I don't do TikTok. Apparently it's on Book Talk or whatever. I don't know. I don't do that. I don't even, I'm not on Goodreads or anything. So I didn't know what was trending. I just picked this book up and I bought it. And I read it, and the first one was good, but the second one hooked me. Hooked me. It took me forever to read the first one, and it's like pretty short-ish. I mean, I consider it short. I like really big books. So it was like 200, 300 pages, and I read it like in a few weeks, you know? I wasn't in a rush. But oh my gosh, and then came the second one, and I was like, oh, I don't even know what it was called. I can't remember what the name of it is, but the second book in that series, I was like, wow. This is a good one. And I binged. Like, I'm talking, I read hundreds of pages within days. I'm someone who, if I start on a reading kick, if something really grabs me, I will be up until 3 a.m. reading. My husband thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> Maybe I am. Maybe I am. But anyways, so that book series hooked me. Hooked me. And I was devastated when I read the last one. And the last one I read was a little bit different. I'm pretty sure it's still technically in A Court of Thorns and Roses. Or a spinoff? I don't know. Again, can't remember the name. But the last one I read, I was just devastated. I was like, oh. And I mean, I'm pretty sure they're coming out more. I don't know. So I picked up um, the Crescent, yeah, Crescent City series. This is the second book in the series. This is the most recent book. The third one has not come out yet. I'm so excited. Let me tell you, if you liked um, A Court of Thorn and Roses, you have to read these. You have. That's all I'm gonna say, is you have to read these and just take my advice. Take my advice and read them. Um, it was pretty different, actually, from A Court of Thorns and Roses. It still had, like... So, A Court of Thor Thorns and Roses is, like, humans and, um, like, the Fae, you know. It's a fantasy. It's so good, though. If you have not read it, just go read it. Read it right now. If it sounds interesting, just go read it. It's amazing. And then after you get done, read these, because they're also amazing. So yeah, anyways, I just got done with this. If anyone wants to talk about this book, if you've read this, please DM me on Instagram. I need someone to talk with it about. I don't think any of my friends have read this book. I don't think any- I don't think I have any friends that are- well, I do. I have one friend that really does like, um, The Core of Thorns and Roses. And I haven't read Sarah J. Mass's other books, like her- other series is besides The Court of Thorn and Roses and this one. And my friend has read the other one, but I don't think she's read this yet. I, Maddie, if you're listening, I need you to read this. Anyways, okay. So I finished that one. If you have any thoughts, don't spoil anything in the comments below. I don't know if maybe y'all are as crazy as I am, but just DM me, you know? Have my Instagram down below and talk to me about it. Anyways, so I picked up this one from my local library. It is called Six of Crows. Now this is in the Y section. And you know, honestly, I think... Um, Crescent City is in the adult fantasy section, but I think, uh, no, I think, uh, A Court of Thorns and Roses is also in the adult fantasy section. This one's YA, though, and I picked this up. Our library doesn't have many in the fan- just the fantasy section, but they have a lot in the YA section. So that's what I gravitated towards, and I like it so far. Um, Six of Crows, if you've read this, 
Let me know. I am not very far. I have a piece of yarn in it <laughs> to mark my place. But yeah, I'm not very far. But honestly, I was reading this and like the characters' names, the premise, it gave me deja vu. And I was like, have I read this book already? <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I'm fairly certain I have not. But I was like, have I watched a TV show based off this? Because just the names were so familiar. And like I said, the premise. I'm going to keep reading, but I was like, I feel like this just feels familiar. And it's not that it's like a super common theme or anything. It's, it's literally everything in it. I'm like, I don't know. But it's very interesting and I like it so far. So yeah, if, if you have any recommendations, um, please let me know. Because I am yearning for another series especially that can just, you know, hook me. Hook me. Anyways, and let me know what you're reading. Okay, so... <laughs> That's in my book section. Thanks for sticking around for that. Um, let me know if you like that. Maybe I'll keep it around. Um, but yeah, thanks for hanging. And that's it today. <laughs> hope you have a really cozy. I hope it. I don't know. I guess. I hope it doesn't get cold if you're not. If you're not ready for summer to end. But if you're ready for fall, I hope. I hope you feel fall vibes. Alrighty. Well, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Thanks for joining and I'll see you next time.